getting a software engineering job is hard until you do this. And in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what you need to do to go from someone who's struggling to get interviews all the way to becoming someone that companies are fighting over to hire. My name is Amon. I'm a former software engineer and current career coach who's worked at companies like Amazon and Shopify. In college, I landed six software engineering internships and started a six-figure full-time job the day after I graduated. Now I help computer science students, new grads, and software engineers land their dream jobs in tech. Now, before I can break down what you need to do to make getting a software engineering job unbelievably easy, we need to take a step back and understand why everyone thinks it's so hard nowadays. Let's paint the historical picture here. Why do you and seemingly everyone else think it's impossible to get a job nowadays? Well, here's the thing. It wasn't always like this. If you actually go back five or six years ago, there are posts on LinkedIn where people talk about how they literally only studied HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for three months and somehow got a six-figure full-time job. In the context of today, that probably sounds insane, but it's absolutely true. I remember back in 2016, 2017, tech, software engineering, and computer science were like the cool new kids on the block. Every single person knew that this was going to be the most anticipated field that everyone wanted to get into, and employers were hiring like crazy. So what the hell happened? Well, there are a few key reasons why today is far different than 10 years ago. The first and most obvious reason is the level of layoffs hitting the tech market. According to layoffs.fyi, there have been roughly 80,000 people laid off in tech so far this year. And this number excludes future layoffs that have already been declared, that have already been decided, but not yet taken place. For example, Intel recently stated in a Reuters article that they were cutting their workforce by 15% from the 96,000 people working there now, all the way down to 75,000, which is 22% less than end of year last year. Between these future cuts and previous layoffs, over 100,000 qualified tech employees are out of a job. That's bad enough on its own, but this is at a time where we're seeing explosive growth in the number of computer science degrees awarded in the US. Data from the National Student Clearinghouse shows that since 2021, over 100,000 computer science degrees have been earned in the US every single year. This asymmetry is insane, and the fact that it's happening at the same time where jobs are being cut, more people entering the market, the US is getting closer to a recession, and geopolitical tensions continue to rise makes it even worse. Look, based on the picture I just painted now, it looks like you're screwed. It feels like no matter what you do, you keep getting rejected, you can never get interviewed, and even if you do get an interview, it feels like you can never pass it. And sure, it feels unfair that five, 10 years ago, the market was completely different. You could be a new grad or career switcher in your 30s, and just waltz into a six figure job. I get it. It really feels like things were way different back then. But I want to tell you a secret. I see people getting high paying software engineering jobs every single day. Here are just three of my students who actually got six figure jobs in the past year. There's Dev Patel who got a six figure job at Klaviyo, Sri Chan Nadella who got a mid six figure job at Amazon, and Olion who got offers from Boeing, Oracle, Costco, and Amazon as well. Even my own little brother Adil got multiple six figure offers from AI companies, and he literally team matched with eight teams at Google and turned every single one down. I know it sounds like I'm lying, but I swear to God I'm not. He's also had interviews at Microsoft and multiple other big tech companies as well. So how is it possible that some people have access to the entire market, but everyone else is getting hung out to dry and feel like they can't get anything? When you take a step back and look at what's happening, it all becomes clear. We're now entering the new engineering economy, where all of the wealth flows upward to the top 1% engineers. This leaves the bottom 99% completely screwed over. Because in a world of AI, one top 1% engineer with millions of dollars of AI tools behind their back is going to be more productive than 100 subpar engineers. And companies are starting to realize this. What I'm about to tell you is going to blow your mind. But as reported by Wired, Thinking Machine Labs rejected a staggering $1 billion offer from Meta to join its super intelligence lab. The compensation packages range from $200 million to $1 billion over multiple years to lure top researchers from Mira Marathi's startup. Quote, so far at Thinking Machine Labs, not a single person has taken the offer, Mira confirmed to Wired. Even though they turned the offer down, that's insane. Imagine a single technical employee getting a billion dollars in compensation over four years with a signing bonus of $100 million. That's like a 30-year exit from a world-class entrepreneur as a sign-on bonus to build out an internal AI meta. Truly unbelievable. So what's the secret here? Well, if you're one of the people who are struggling, you have to reset how you view this entire situation. You cannot keep looking back at the past and being like, oh, things are different back then. If it was only 2015, I would be totally fine. 
The past is the past and it's never going to come back. This is the way things are. We live in the new engineering economy and all you can do is move forward. It may not be right or fair, but this is the market you're playing in. Once you've accepted this fact and laid out the foundation for personal growth, you're ready to learn the secret for applying to jobs in this day and age. And what we've seen from the people who worked with us who have significantly improved their odds of getting a job in tech is that they are obsessed with what they can control. Psychologists actually have a name for this, and it's called locus of control. Essentially, locus of control is a fancy term to describe what we see as the source of control in our lives. If you have an internal locus of control, you believe that your actions determine your results. Whereas if you have an external locus of control, you believe that your life is determined by luck, fate, or some other external circumstance. In other words, if you think that the reason you suck is because of the market, that's an external locus of control. Now, on the other hand, if you have an internal locus of control, you believe you suck because you haven't put enough work in. But you also believe that you have the power to get better and directly improve your results. The reality is often a mix of both, but studies show that people who lean more towards the internal locus tend to take more initiative, persevere through setbacks, and feel more empowered in general. They'll often end up earning more money, have a higher quality of life, and greater mental resilience. Regardless of what you think, if you want to actually succeed in the market of today, you must cultivate an internal locus of control. Think about it this way. When you say the phrase, the market is bad, that externalizes control. You're just throwing away your agency and capacity for change so you can hide behind some half ass excuse. Sure, the market is bad, but so what? This is a market you were born into and you have to play the hand you were dealt. Look, the game is what the game is. You can't change the game, you can't change the market, and you can't change the industry, but you can learn how to play and get better. Saying the market is bad is like playing a game of basketball and saying, oh, the hoops are too high and I'm too short, so therefore I can't be a basketball player. But you know what? Just learn how to play. Taller people might have an advantage, but it doesn't mean you can't have a career. Nate Robinson played in the NBA for 11 years and he was only 5'9". At the end of the day, you're choosing to be in the game, so you might as well learn the rules and win. Now, once you've internalized control, you can follow this six-step roadmap that we apply to every one of our students to actually get a job in tech. The six areas of getting employed are resume, LinkedIn, referrals, behavioral interviews, coding interviews, and leak code. Let's start with your resume. The biggest mistake I see people make on their resume is that they don't focus on outputs and impact. To fix this, we teach our students to start every bullet with an action verb and quantify every single metric possible. This shows impact, ownership, and has proven to get better results. Your LinkedIn is basically the same as your resume, but a lot of people don't even fill their LinkedIn out. They don't have a profile photo or anything. This is an easy win if your resume is solid, so just make sure you have a professional profile picture and that everything lines up with your work history. Dates, titles, and responsibilities need to all be the same. For referrals, the biggest mistake I see people make is they just don't ask for them. The students we see who are most successful in this area are well used to making dozens of referral requests per week and securing 10 to 15 legitimate referrals each month. Now let's talk about lead code. The most successful students we work with are always consistent with lead code. Sure, they're not the best. It's not like they can solve all lead code hards or anything, but they're doing lead code on a consistent basis either every single day or on the weekends. It's one thing to understand it, but it's another thing entirely to deliver a solution in a live setting under pressure. And finally, there's behavioral interviews. The most successful people we work with who have mastered behavioral interviews have a roster of between five and 15 stories they can reference at any time, so they're never blindsided by a question. Now, of course, you can focus on everything in life yourself, that's totally valid. But if you want our help to actually implement all six of those steps to eventually land a job in tech, I run a school for aspiring software engineers called the Software Engineering Accelerator. We have a team of multiple FANG recruiters and four FANG engineers at companies like Microsoft, Meta, and Google who will literally sit with you on one-on-one -on -one calls for months to help you land a job. I know getting a software engineering job right now feels impossible, but if you do what I said, internalize your locus of control, and actually work on the six areas I mentioned, you will improve. Put the time in every single day and you will land the job of your dreams. If you want more detail on how to master lead code, click this video over here. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.